Blessed art thou, O Christ our God, who hath revealed the fishermen as most wise, having sent upon them the Holy Spirit, and through them thou hast fished the whole universe, O lover of mankind, glory to Thee. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Well, today we celebrate uh, Holy Pentecost. Uh, uh, we have come through a long journey from Pascha, and now we have the fulfillment of all, of all the work now. Uh, the Lord came and He uh, died on the cross for us, the Redeemer of the world, and now uh, He got His apostles together and says, I will ascend into heaven, and then He wanted them to wait ten days in Jerusalem until the Father, He would ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. So, the, in obedience, the apostles tarried in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came. Now, the Lord warned them about the Spirit coming, but He didn't give them all the details of the, of, the, of the procession of the Holy Spirit. And so, they're all gathered in obedience in the upper room, and then as a mighty rushing wind, we know the story of the uh, Holy Spirit coming upon the apostles. I guess there's about 120 gathered in the upper room, apostles and disciples, and they uh, saw the mighty, they felt the mighty rushing wind, and then they saw these cloven tongues of fire descend upon them and go actually go into their bodies, the uncreated energy of God. When that happened, they were changed. Remember, Peter was a coward. He denied the Lord three times uh, during the fall the mock trial. But now, Peter is full of the power. The Greek word is dunamis. He is full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you get filled with that power, uh, nothing matters, uh, nothing in your life really is important anymore except uh, fulfilling the mission, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is always in unity with the Holy Trinity the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, always in full agreement. And so as the Holy Spirit went and dwelt within the, the apostles and disciples, they went forth with all boldness and preached the good news that Jesus Christ is our Redeemer for the salvation of the world. So we know the story in Acts where Peter preaches uh, the word to uh, a group of people in Jerusalem. Remember, he was a coward. But not now. And he preaches out of the Old Testament, the book of Joel. And by that, he stimulated the crowd. The Holy Spirit one covered that crowd where they cried out, What should we do to be saved? And Peter says, Repent and be baptized. So he gave them the, the, the code, I guess you could say, of salvation, the beginning of our salvation. And so uh, I don't hear that today in sermons. When, when people, when ministers preach the Word of God, do, do the people in, in the congregation cry out, what should we do to be saved? Or they is lulled to sleep by, by whatever. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there's a definite change. If you're not changed, then I suspect the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. I think about uh, St. Seraphim, the Seraph. He was so full of the Holy Spirit that Montalilov couldn't even look him in the eye because his eyes were flashing with the glory of God. And does not the scripture tell us that the eyes are the windows into the soul? Some people don't want to look you in the eye. And that's a, that's a, that's a concern to me. Because by uh, having eye contact, that you actually can look into that person's soul. And maybe maybe by the presence of the Holy Spirit in your temple 
that your eyes are illuminated differently than one who does not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not invade you. You have to ask him to come in. Remember the story that Jesus told that I stand at the door and knock. But you have to open the door to let the Lord come in. And the same with the Holy Spirit. He has been given to all of, of the world uh, from the first from that first century all of, up till now. And we in the church have the process called baptism and chrismation. Baptism is the uh, when we come out of the waters of baptism uh, and uh, after our training of learning the orthodox theology through catechism and when the time is right then we are baptized into, into the, these uh, waters we come out a new creature in Christ uh, where we are supposed to be illuminated uh, put on a white robe wear a cross and these are uh, uh, physical things that we see that is supposed to be happening within the soul of that person. Then we go right into chrismation, where the holy miron is applied to the parts of your body, head, chin, cheeks, over the eyes, the hands, and so forth, uh, sealing you uh, into the Holy Spirit. The holy miron is uh, the special oil that only is used for that sacrament or mysterion. So I think about in the beginning in Genesis it said the spirit was moving over the waters of the earth and so the prophets of old they did not uh, they uh, the maybe the Holy Spirit came on them temporarily so they could uh, uh, be that mouthpiece of God and speak forth the uh, the, the words of God uh, and, and so they could be the mouthpiece to tell the people of Israel uh, what God is doing and what they're supposed to be doing whether it, to go here or go there or repent and wear sackcloth and roll around in ashes it all depends uh, what the spirit uh, moved the prophets uh, of old to say so now today uh, since we are celebrating the Holy Pentecost that the spirit is given to us freely but we have to invite it in one of the litmus tests of having that Holy Spirit dwelling in your temple is are you bearing fruit that the Holy Spirit has? Trees bear fruit and at a certain time we're able to pick the fruit from the trees or the bushes but we can't do it when it's not mature so we have to wait for the fruit or you know vegetables and so forth to, to become mature. The same with the Holy Spirit in us when we are chrismated, we get all of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit does not get all of us. So that's that process we call in the church theosis, where we become, uh, through our desire, our heart's desire, become more like Jesus Christ. And then as we become more like Jesus Christ, uh, the Father loved His Son, the Father loves you. He says, I will bless those who bless me, saith the Lord. And it says repentance is the means of salvation. So without repentance, there is no salvation. So it's not just coming up to the front uh, of, a, of an altar call and saying a short prayer and then walking away and skipping down the aisle and say, whoopee, I'm saved. There's a work that has to be done. Just as a salmon has to swim up the stream and struggle to get to its birthplace, so a Christian has to struggle daily over the passions that... that uh, Adam seemed to ignite within us because of his sin, Adam and Eve of their sin, ignited our passions and now we are on that road because of Christ being our Redeemer has paved the way for us now to inherit salvation through repentance. So look at yourself. Is the fruit of the Holy Spirit immature or maturing in you? Are, are, are other people allowed to pick your fruit? And that sounds kind of weird, but think about it love joy peace patience long suffering you know you know the list there's about nine uh fruits of the holy spirit and these are supposed to be increasing within each one of us as we surrender our will onto the will of god as we start to to march in cadence as the military would say the left and the right stepping left right left right we're in cadence so God wants us in cadence with the Holy Spirit. 
He will lead us into all truth. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you need it. It's been given to us freely. We heard about in the Kentuckian and the Antiparians today about how the language was confused at the Tower of Babel and they had to disperse because they couldn't understand each other. Well, that's all been overcome now because in Jerusalem, we read in the epistle today that the, all the, the, the Jerusalem was packed with people for that celebration of Pentecost. Everybody heard the good news in their own language. So because of the foreign languages that were created back in the Tower of Babel, now we have the apostles preaching in a language that they can understand. Maybe they all spoke in their native language, but maybe the Holy Spirit changed that language into the hearer's ears so they could hear it in their own language, and now they could take that testimony, that news, back to their homeland and tell them what miracle happened in Jerusalem. It's amazing that, uh, that when you read that portion of Scripture in Acts, you say, wow, look at that. Uh, they even accused the apostles of being drunk with wine because it was early in the morning. Not true. They were drunk on the Holy Spirit. And so th the scriptures tell us, do, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. By being filled with the Holy Spirit, you now can accomplish the will of God in your life and be pleasing to Him. Because I, I warn you, there is a judgment seat of Christ and if you don't get the work and do the work of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will stand very uh, before the judgment seat of Christ wanting. And there will, I, I think there's going to be a big old basket of towels that uh, when the tears flow, when you realize what you could have done in the power of the Holy Spirit for the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus will have to wipe away your tears. There will be crying. But but we don't want to hear those words, depart from me, you are cursed, for I never knew you. We want to hear, enter into uh, paradise, into, into heaven, my good and faithful servant. So we've got, now's our time. Now's our time to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. If now is the time, not wait another day. The scriptures tell us today is the day of salvation. Don't waste it. Every heartbeat, every, every moment of the day, uh, you have the opportunity to repent and fulfill the will of God in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is my encouragement to me and to you all today on this Holy Day of Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.